So Mike, I think we're ready to hear your great news. Please join me in welcoming my friend. With your indulgence, I will sit. Because if I don't, you'll be calling 911 or Fort whatever. Well, first of all, thank you very much. It's nice to be here with you today. A um, little housekeeping to take care of if you allow me. Getting old. In front of you uh, is a coin that we like for you to take home with you. That is what's called the challenge coin. For those of you who are not familiar with the challenge coin, that's kind of a thing that we give, or the mil actually st starts with the military. The military gives to honor people who have been helpful to them. And so we had one coined from the airport, and we hope that you will take it and hang on to it. The, um, there's so many old faces and friends out here. It's hard for me to, I'm, I'm probably, they only allowed me four hours tonight. <laughs> so I'm not going to... Uh, get in too much uh, to, to name you all, but I do see Gary Anderson. I want to, I haven't seen Gary for a while. I want to congratulate Gary for uh, his recent award. And I will tell you that it doesn't seem possible, but I was talking to the folks from uh, the uh, Rockford Ice Hogs. Where are you? Raise your hands. There's the Ice Hogs. But it was uh, 12 years ago that I went downtown uh, to help work on the rave organization or form the rave organization. And uh, in doing so, I was privileged to uh, meet Gary and uh, the folks that work with Gary and trying to do nice things for downtown. And certainly nobody's done more for our downtown Rockford, that is, uh, than Gary Anderson. So congratulations, Gary. Nice to see you. <laughs> I gave a uh, presentation to a group mm, maybe a month or so ago. And uh, there was a big kind of heavy set fellow sitting in the front row. And when it got to questions, he raised his hand and I thought, oh boy, here we go. And, and so he said, uh, you know, Mike, you're no spring chicken. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I've never thought of myself as not being a spring chicken. Uh, younger, you know, I started out as a young guy in this business and... Uh, uh, and today I, I see that, uh, I know that McNamara was supposed to be here and uh, Shirley, I don't know if it is Tom or Shirley here, but I know Mayor Jury is here and Mayor Johnson or Pre Village President Johnson. And I got thinking on the way over here tonight, three of the four, not no offense, Steve, not you, but three of the four, I knew when they were just in shorts, little kids. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, life is tough on you, isn't it? I mean... I'm looking, Greg, I mean, he was in shorts and tennis shoes when I first met Greg. So it's good to see you. Um, although you're starting to look a little older yourself there, Mayor. Um, oh, that's nothing. I'm being good. Um, you know, I'm often asked at these types of events, who the lucky girl is that married me. And it was actually 48 years ago. That's an old bio, 48 years ago. And uh, she is a, I mean, how can you not feel lucky? So, yeah. <laughs> so I'd like you to meet my wife, Linda. Not to be confused, but mother to Michael Jr., who I'm really getting sick and tired of hearing about that guy. But uh, our two children, eight grandchildren, number nine on the way in March. So we're excited about that. Thank you. Um, the airport. Let me tell you about the airport. Now, the airport, and, and frankly, I really applaud Tanya and the Parks uh, Chamber of Commerce for doing this type of an event. Because, unfortunately, there are so many people who just don't know what's going on in our community. And, uh, or maybe more importantly, what needs to be going on in our community. 
And, uh, you know, Gary is an example of all the work that's been done downtown Rockford. But uh, the airport authority itself really is a ge we're our own separate governmental authority. It's spread amongst the city of Rockford, city of Loves Park, village of McChesney Park, some uh, Cherry Valley. If I don't say that, Kathy will get mad at me. Uh, Cherry Valley, parts of one of its village of Winnebago. And that uh, authority called the Rock, Greater Rockford Airport Authority, now known as the Chicago Rockford International Airport, um, has seven commissioners. And the seven commissioners are appointed, uh, three by uh, the city of Rockford mayor, uh, two by the Winnebago County board chairman, one by a mayor of Loves Park, and one by the village president of Benchesney Park. So it's a seven member board. And uh, with us today is, where's Mayor? I saw Mayor Johnson earlier. Where, where are you, Mayor? He did run into a quick oh, did he? Okay, well, Steve, uh, Steve and Greg are here as appointing authorities. And I would like to introduce to you some of our board members, four of them that are here. Paul Cicero, our chairman. Paul? <laughs> now, this is water, right? It's not vodka, is it? Yeah. <laughs> We could be here for four hours if it's not good. <laughs> Tom Myers, our vice chairman. <laughs> Tom is a Love's Park appointee. Uh, Commissioner Leslie West. Leslie. <laughs> Commissioner Mike Shablaski. <laughs> and your very own Tanya Lamia. I'd also like to introduce to you, if I may, the, um, some of our members of our staff. Some had to run back because we're under an ice and snow uh, warning, so they're preparing, hopefully, for the worst, uh, and we'll get the best. Uh, our Deputy Director of Finance Administration, Shelly Casaro. Shelly. Who I believe is a McChesney Park girl, right? Yeah. And Director of Operations and Planning, Zach Oakley is our Deputy Director. Zach actually tonight is down in San Antonio, Texas, meeting with airlines, passenger airlines, hopefully. Our Executive Assistant, Kathy Brueggemann. Our Director of Cargo Operations, Ken Ryan. Ken. Our Economic and Properties Manager, uh, Economic Development and Properties Manager, Jeff Paulsine, Jeff. And our operations manager, is he still here? Seth Nigren. And help him, not knocking something over there. Uh, Seth, if you see him duck out, it's because we're worried about the snow and the ice. And again, a lot of operations at night out there, so we gotta make sure those runways are clear. So, um, you know, when we talk about, when I show you what's going on at the airport, um, and not in any certain order, uh, I believe our board, at least they did when I was on, on board, the board, and I, I believe our current board thinks this way. You know, we think in terms of uh, growth, economic development, opportunity, opportunity, jobs, most importantly, jobs. Jobs, 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 that's everything we do and investment. And I think what you'll see is the massive investment that has been made at our airport really doesn't benefit us. Our, the piece of on your property tax bill that you see for the airport is so small, it's really kind of insignificant. Not to say that any portion of a tax bill is insignificant, but it's small. Was the importance that everybody, whether it's McChesney, Loves Park, Rockford, Winnebago County, uh, which is why I applaud this event tonight so much, because what it does is it brings the business people to the forefront in terms of understanding the role of government. And I think that's very important. When you look at what we've done and when I show you what we've done, I think you will see that it couldn't have been done without government. And uh, when we talk about funding and fundraising and spending money, you know, so much of our money comes from the federal government and the state government and local uh, investments that are made by cities, counties, Loves Park, Chesney, Winnebago County. And so uh, 
I've, and, and the one thing that I am constantly, I guess, surprised at, and I maybe shouldn't be, but I'm constantly surprised at is how little people know about what's going on at our airport. So I very much appreciate this opportunity, Tanya, and all of you to, uh, to uh, show you what's going on. And so again, keep in mind that the main, in my, my interpretation, the main investment of our board is all about jobs, growth, economic development, opportunity, and investment. Mike, am I doing this right? Is it the arrow here? Okay. So I will tell you, when I showed up on the uh, doorstep of the airport in 2012 as a new commissioner, um, we were just a sleepy little regional general aviation airport. And so the transition from then till now, I think, has been really, rather remarkable. So I'm going to take you, kind if I may, on a tour of the airport and let you see some of the things that are happening. So this is from about, I don't know, I say 10,000 feet. Now the airport itself, keep, let me start out by telling you that Midway Airport in Chicago is 600 acres. Rockford Airport is 3,000 acres. And when I say 3,000, it's divided into two sections. One is what we call inside the fence, which is air operations, and then land outside the fence, which is 2,100 acres uh, for uh, different types of development. Um, okay. The first uh, big investment that we made back a couple years ago was the expansion and modernization of our terminal. And uh, that was a terminal that was built in the 80s and it was really kind of getting old. And I will address, because it's something I'm often asked about passenger versus cargo, so forth and so on. Um, but you can see, with, with this was a $25 million investment, both for an addition and for remodeling of the inside. Now, you can see the monthly employments, you can, it's pretty clear uh, back in uh, 2019, uh, third column over from the left, that's when COVID hit. And so we, like all other airports, we were affected negatively on the passenger side um, and uh, it's coming back. Actually, Rockford was ranked number three in the Allegiant system. There's Mayor Anderson, how are you? Steve, not good to see you. Um, give me a break for a second. I can't grab that with my left. Hold on, I'll be right with you. But let me say this. Passenger service is not something that we have given up on. I, I'm quite often asked that question, uh, and we certainly have not given up on the passenger service. We were ranked third in the country by Allegiant for their operations in terms of uh, loads coming in and out of, out of this airport. Uh, Allegiant, by the way, I, I'm the first to tell you, five, six years ago was just a horrible, horrible, horrible airline. And... Uh, they have really upped their game nicely. I mean, they, they, I mean, new airplanes, they finally got labor peace with their team. And uh, it's very pleasant. I don't know if any of you had chance. Who's flown Legion? Yeah, good. Well, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, their staff, their attendants, pilots, just wonderful, wonderful people. They do a great job. We're very fortunate to, to have them here. When they first came to Rockford, they were servicing about... 14 cities in the U.S. They're now flying into 168 cities in the U.S. So they are a remarkably fast-growing airport or airline. Excuse me. Uh, we have a service right now to Destin, Fort Myers, Las Vegas, Orlando, Sarasota, Tampa Bay, and Phoenix, nonstop out of Rockford, and uh, we're Zach's down there with with them right now and hoping to come back with a, a new destination, hoping to come back with a new destination. And by the way, these passenger airlines, they are in demand. I mean, it's really, really, really hard to, to attract an airline uh, to, to the U.S., or to an airport in the U.S. right now. Um, our proximity, uh, Bob O'Brien used to say when I was chairman, he was a director, Bob O'Brien used to say all the time, 
the the upside or the excuse me the downside to Rockford is you're 65 miles away from O'Hare. The upside to Rockford is you're 65 miles away from O'Hare, and we find that to be absolutely true. On the passenger side, it's very unhelpful, but on the cargo side, as you'll see here, it's ex it's extremely extremely helpful. So that's that's our new gate four, which you can see is very busy. And if I don't say something now, I'll never hear the end of it because he's a whiny baby. But uh, <laughs> Howie Heaton loves Park Boy. Howie owns and operates Skyview, which is our restaurant out at the airport. And it's very successful and very nice, by the way, first class. So that's, that's a picture of our terminal on the air side. Uh, I love this particular picture because it shows uh, both the UPS and the Amazon. And this is the third, I always say three legs of the stool as far as cargo is concerned. The first is uh, UPS, which we'll talk about. Second is Amazon. And the third now on the cargo stool is called international cargo, which we'll be talking about. Now, what probably most people don't know is that uh, we are now a daytime operation for UPS. We historically were always a nighttime operation for UPS. Flights would come in from all over the country uh, starting about 9 p.m., uh, unload, reload, and go back out again. But we now, uh, over the last two years, have become a daytime sort operation as well. And so that's helped us significantly. UPS, by the way, and again, I'm not telling you any secrets out of school, but UPS in the last two years has invested in their facilities here. Uh, Kathy will get mad if I don't use this because I asked her to give it to me. Let's see, right here. These are UPS facilities here. Uh, they have invested $70 million in those just in the last two years. So when people ask me, you know, is UPS going to stick around? Are they going to be here for a while? I don't know, but investing $70 million, I think, is a pretty good sign. And this is, this is typically a nighttime sort, uh, starting at about 9 o'clock p.m., going till about 4 in the morning. Overall, between daytime and nighttime, there are about 29 UPS flights a day coming in and out of uh, the Rock, Chicago Rockford Airport. Now, this was one of my pride and joys. One of the things that we, I was very intrigued about was how can we uh, bring uh, new business to the airport that's not necessarily uh, UPS or, yeah, at that time it was not UPS. This is the AAR facility. This is a $40 million facility. Uh, each one of those two hangers, that it may be not look at, but you can put four to five 737s inside one of those hangers at one time. They were sized when uh, engineered and designed. They were sized to accommodate a 747-8 or uh, the Airbus 380, the double-decker Airbus. So that was a 40 million, and by the way, that was a $40 million investment uh, that the state participated in, the city of Rockford, city of Lowe's Park, McChesney Park, and Winnebago County all participated in this. And I will tell you, after it got built, I got a little weak need because things, the economy got a little weird. And uh, I will, I'm happy to report to you today that there's over 400 jobs at this facility. And they signed, if you remember, in the last 12 months, a uh, contract with United Airlines. So United is doing all their 737 maintenance here in Rockford, Illinois. And that's what it looks like finished. Now, look at that little building to the left, because I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, one of the things that we thought as we were trying to expand the use of the airport was, and the, the folks from AAR were very, very helpful to us, they needed mechanics. That's that. At that time, now I'm going back to 2015 maybe, that at the time was the Rock Valley College School of Aeronautics. Uh, and 
It was pretty pathetic, frankly, at the time. And I went to Rock Valley at the time and I said, listen, the jobs that these young men and women can have coming out of your two-year program are wonderful jobs. They're $50,000 a year start jobs. And they're not just here at Rockford at AAR, but they're at other operations at, on the Rockford Airport. And um, they, uh, they go to O'Hare, Midway, Milwaukee, Madison, wherever they may go. And wherever they go, they're hired immediately. And this school at that time was graduating 25 students a year. And the group at Rock Valley said, well, what are you looking for? And I said, 125 minimal. And uh, they said, oh, boy, I don't know. We don't. I said, no, you, you got to do this. And thank God they brought in a fellow by the name of Mike Mastriani. I wish he was here so I could pat him on his back. And Mike Mastriani uh, and his board came in and said, absolutely, we'll build the school. And this is the new Rock Valley School. This picture really doesn't do it justice. But uh, they are now producing 125 students a year. And these kids can go anywhere they want to go. And it's remarkable. And, it's, and by the way, the Rock Valley College program here in Rockford, Illinois, is viewed nationwide. You talk to people around the country, it's viewed nationwide as one of the best A&P mechanic schools in the country. So it's, we're very fortunate to have them. And much to the chagrin of my friends at Rock Valley, uh, today, we put them right across the street from the AAR hangar so kids could go across and work there as interns. Uh, but we're kind of surrounding that Rock Valley College School now. So I don't know what's going to happen. We may have to build them a new facility, the next facility. So this was the original design. That, uh, Kathy, here we go. I'll use my pen. This building right here was a spec building that we built when I was on the board. Bob O'Brien was the director, 75,000 square feet. And it had room for about three, we show five, but it was really three, three parking spots for airports, uh, for airplanes, excuse me. And uh, this was the build out plan for uh, uh, Amazon. And I will tell you, we've done it. So that is the same Amazon operation we added on about 120,000 square feet here. We've expanded their ramp. And even, actually, this area here is all now concrete and ramp. Uh, as my friends from UPS will say to us regularly, flying to an airport and landing in an airport, easy. What to do with the airplane once it's on the airport, where to put it, that's not so easy. So that's what you gotta do. You gotta have, you gotta have the capability to handle these aircraft. So that Amazon operation is something we're very proud of. And uh, we had heard Ken Ryan is our cargo fellow, does a wonderful job. He's got a fellow over in China and a fellow over in Europe that are knocking on doors over there and calling. I, I'm not a big cold call believer. So uh, we have our own team handling that kind of stuff with Ken. But they, Ken got word that Amazon was looking for a Midwest hub. And uh, we got on the phone immediately to him, many trips to Seattle, uh, Washington, and meeting with the Amazon folks, and it's been a, just a wonderful, wonderful relationship. And that's, you can see where the building, the roof line, roof colors kind of change. That was during the construction form. Now, let me stop for a second, and, because it's true for Amazon, it was true for our terminal, it's true for the things you're gonna hear about coming forward. Couldn't be done without the great cooperation. And it's something that everybody needs to recognize is a real asset here in this area. And that's the Northern Illinois Building Trades Association. And I invite them whenever I can. Guys, stand up. I am told repeatedly uh, for contractors and subcontractors, they are shocked at how good, and again, keep in mind, they're probably comparing to what's going on in Chicago, but they are absolutely shocked at how wonderful to deal with and to work with our building trades guys are. And they bring in, with our contractors, projects on time, ahead of schedule, 
remarkable guy. So thank you very much for all your work. More and now this area here is now all concrete today. So this area that's all concrete, that's $19 million worth of concrete. So next time you're complaining about your driveway, <laughs> talk to us. This, this area now connects completely the um, Amazon ramp and the UPS ramp. Uh, what, there are ramps, we just refer to them as Amazon UPS. FAA doesn't like us to do that, but we do it anyway. Um, so a lot of activity, a lot of construction jobs going on, and we're very happy about that. More, more of the, by the way, this, just as an interesting note, this area down here is 50 feet below grade up here. So not only do we have to pour concrete, we had to bring in thousands of dump, dump trucks of dirt to bring the grade up in order to finish the uh, complete the process. There you go. That's half of 19 million bucks right there. Now, this is an area that probably most of you have, are not overly familiar with unless you've had the chance to go out to AAR. Again, AAR here. Rock Valley College here. This area, this whole area that my friends were chirping about is called the South International Cargo Operation. This is a $50 million project that we are just passing through phase one and two. Phase one and two are, represents $50 million. There's going to be a phase three, four, and five coming behind. Um, this phase one and two represents 600 jobs, new jobs, currently, today, as we speak. And this is what the area looked like before we began. Again, for reference, you have AAR, Rock Valley. This is the first phase, building one cargo. But again, remember what I mentioned to you, where do you put the airplanes when they get here? That's a key thing. That's building one. This is what we call land side, where the trucks all go. The other side is on the airport, where the airplanes go. This now is that green area, that green grass area that we were talking about earlier. That's where the, this is uh, pavement, both here and here, that accommodate six 747 cargo uh, aircraft which are currently coming in. And this is building one, phase one. This is building two, phase two. Building two is not quite open yet. We anticipate by the end of March, it'll be open. But we're currently handling, well, let me say this. In November, we were, I was told that we had 97 cargo flights, international cargo flights at the airport coming from Europe, China, Asia, India, Vietnam, all over the place. And, um, Today, uh, we're almost running out of ramp space now for the current amount of business that we have. This is a good day. This is five aircraft, 747, 747, and Airbus 340, 747 and 747. That's building phase one. This is building two, phase two. AR in the background there. And these are all flights bringing cargo into Rockford that are going all over the United States. Now, the, some people think that they're just going to Chicago. That's not true. Fli uh, these guys are flying. These operations are bringing freight in and taking freight out. Uh, the freight coming in goes to Denver, Atlanta, Indianapolis, all over the Detroit, all over the, all over the Midwest. So we are receiving entity and a shipping entity for international cargo. Now here, this is, this is something that we think is pretty good. This is our cargo activity just over the last uh, four years. As you can see, just UPS, UPS Amazon, and now the international cargo on top of the UPS and Amazon. So 
you know, are, are we becoming a very substantial international cargo operation in the United States? The answer is yes, absolutely we are. As of today, there are 31 international cargo airlines operating in and out of Rockford on top of UPS and Amazon. And this is just a list of those 31 carriers. Now, one of the, one of the situations that we had when we were trying to get into the cargo business was trying to get two things we needed to accomplish in addition to having the runways. We needed uh, one, a handler, somebody who would unload the airplanes and break the freight down and put them on trucks going to places, and the reverse, bringing freight in, breaking it down, putting the Germany freight on the Germany plane, so forth and so on. Then the other, the other uh, issue was buildings. And so I thought, we, you know, handler is a big deal. So where's the Emory guys? Are you here? Emory. Stand up, Emory. The reason I like to point out Emory is because if it weren't for Emory and our building the buildings, Emory invested millions and millions and millions of dollars. And this is an eastern company, Connecticut, New York area, came into Rockford, bought Emory Air, and invested a whole bunch of money into handlers like this fellow here's a Emory employee marshalling the airplane into a parking spot and so if it weren't for Emory I wouldn't be able to sit here and have this conversation about cargo so we very much appreciate all that Emory does for us there's that's what Emory does well it's not just what they do it's one of the things they do that is unloading a 747 they also fuel the airplane. You can see a tanker under the wing there. This is our newest. You may have heard about it in the last week on the news. Uh, Emirates, which is absolutely unquestionably viewed as one of the top airlines in the world. Their cargo folks just made an agreement with Rockford Airport and Emory to handle their Midwest freight for the United States. So this was the first Emirates flight that came in just this last week. Again, loading and unloading. And correct, David, correct me if I'm wrong, but Emory has gone from when, I, when you first showed up in the airport, 40 employees up to what do you have today? 300. Over 300 employees today. So jobs, 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 jobs. This uh, is a picture that's near and dear to my heart because it was over a year ago where Senator International out of Germany announced that they were gonna turn Rockford into its Midwest base out in for the United States. And this was the first uh, Senator flight that came in. So we were very pleased about it. And if you notice behind the flight is, is our terminal. So we are handling up, up by the terminal. They're now down by the cargo area, so we're pleased about that. Korean Air people, I don't know whether you've had a chance to see Korean flying up and over the city of Rockford, but Korean Air is flying seven flights a week into Rockford currently. A national, I'm just showing you some of the, these are actual guys coming in and out of Rockford. National, Emirates, Act, Atlas, just recently. <laughs> God knows if they don't screw this thing up over in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, this is a Ukrainian airline called Antonov. And uh, they're here right now currently flying about seven a week. And he was here yesterday. That's a, a picture from yesterday. So that is a, uh, a Ukrainian aircraft called Antonov. It is, the, correct me if I'm wrong, world's third largest aircraft? About third largest aircraft in the world. Qatar, another worldwide international famous airline. Uh, and you can see Qatar is now coming into Rockford. We're very pleased about that. Uh, Seth still here? Yeah, Seth's still here. So this is what Seth's going back to. While we go home tonight, Seth's going to this. Um, so, you know, having the runways is one thing, keeping them clean 
and operational is another thing. And so our maintenance guys, and I cannot say enough good things about our guys out at the airport. I mean, when we're home, you know, snuggling in bed, they're out there in 20 below weather, high winds, whatever it may be, keeping those runways open. And I will tell you that our airport, I think, has, I want to say, has never closed for weather, maybe once for a really bad, bad storm. But these guys do, our guys do a remarkable job keeping that airport open and keeping commerce flowing. There's a, there's a good day. That's a fun day. So when you're plowing or blowing your driveway tonight, think about these guys. So one of the things that we are still kind of weak on at the airport is our tower. We have in operation one of two of the oldest towers in the United States. Here in Peoria are two. And that tower from the ground to the bottom of the canopy is 50 feet. And we're, hope, we're being told by the FAA that uh, this is what's coming. So hopefully we'll, it'll be 194 feet to the bottom of the canopy. And so we're, we've got our figures. We need it. It's something that's necessary. Another big construction job. All right, so we talk about the international cargo. You know, when we talk about UPS, those are e-commerce stuff flying from city to city in the US. A plane leaves uh, Dallas, comes to Rockford, unloads. All the stuff picked up in Dallas gets sorted and all the Dallas bound freight goes back on the flight. Uh, when you see Amazon, Amazon is also e-commerce, and uh, that's a situation where they're just using Rockford as a short operation. We're handling about nine flights a day currently for for uh, for Amazon, and when and again, 26, 2,700 people at at uh, UPS, probably 12 to 1,400 people at uh, at any time at uh, Amazon, and now, as we say, not including Emory, uh, they're fantastic numbers, but down at the uh, South Cargo, we're probably looking at about 600 jobs currently today down there, and uh, let me make a political statement if I may, sorry. This is what this region needs, more than anything. You know, do I like people who spend time talking about bachelor's degrees and master's degrees for Rockford. Those are all good conversations to have. But Rockford, and when I say Rockford, I mean the region, loves Park McChesney, the whole area. What we need are jobs for these young men and women coming out of high school that have nowhere to go. And this allows people not only to have jobs, but it allows people to have good paying, quality jobs, benefits. The ability to get married, the ability to have a family, the ability to grow in the community. And I think that's what's really important. So uh, we're very proud of what we've, as you can tell, I'm sure, we're very proud of what we've done out there and what we are doing and continue to do. But I want to share on the international cargo side, these numbers are not our numbers. These are numbers that come from the U.S. Trade Office. Uh, and we update them every month. But you can see that, I better get my Kathy pen out here. You can see that the biggest exports that we're handling are medical instruments out of the US and uh, chemical, what is it, chemical components, x-ray machines, power. There's a lot of interesting stuff flowing through that airport right now. And then on the imports, by value, uh, you can see that uh, cell phones, and I mean, it's not uncommon, I shouldn't say this because of security, but it's, it's not uncommon to see a plane load of cell phones. I mean, loaded to next. The best one I ever remember seeing was I was out on the Sunday night, there was a 747 in from Germany, loaded with Legos. So if you think there ain't, there's no money in toys for kids, flying them millions of dollars across the ocean, to get here in time for, I guess, Christmas. But you have medical instruments, computers, x-ray apparatuses, miscellaneous. Now, Senator, as an example, their primary, not only, by no means only, but you'll see a lot of uh, BMW, Mercedes, Audi parts, cars actually coming off the airplanes, uh, Siemens, MRI machines, Legos, toys, 
lots of stuff. So it's, it's kind of fascinating. And uh, as I was showing somebody around the airport in, in the airport vehicle the other day, I thought, who would have thought? Good old little Rockford, Illinois, good old Northern Illinois. You know, here we are, we're sitting here and we're looking at UPS, Amazon, AAR, United Airlines, all these international carriers. If that doesn't make you proud being a Love's Park, Manchester Park, Rockford, Winnebago County person, I don't know what it would take, but it, it should. So every year, this is the final slide, every year, or excuse me, every 10 years, the state of Illinois governor's office will do an economic impact study of airports. And uh, when I first arrived as director after being on the board, coming back to the airport as director, you see over here, it used to be, uh, I think the year I got there, they did their, their report. We were just under $1 billion in economic impact. And I was really angry about it because I thought, couldn't somebody fudged up the number to get us at least a billion? What's going on? And so they just completed in the last two months uh, the newest update of the, of the information. We're now at $4.7 billion, according to the state of Illinois, economic impact. And off to this, if you look over here to the right, this is what I think is really interesting. According to the state of Illinois, governor's office and Department of Transportation, regional jobs created by the airport or attached in one way or the other to the airport has gone from 5,000 in 2011 up to 21,400. On airport jobs, 1,900 to 8,000. Total economic impact, this is that number that I hated, 995 million to today $4.7 billion. So right here in your backyard is something you all, I hopefully would hope, would be very proud of and that's the Chicago Rockford International Airport. Um, I, I just want to make one more comment. You know, the one thing that we have done, I think, if I may say, pretty well, and I encourage, which is why I think this is such a good event, uh, is reaching out to our congressional folks in Washington, reaching out to our state legislative folks in Springfield, the governor's office, the county, the city, executives, village executives, because you got to get them involved in your projects and, and they want to be involved in your projects. They want to hear about what's going on. And that's important. I mean, frankly, I've got to tell you, and if he were sitting here, I'd say it. If, and he laughs when I say this, but if, if somebody would have told me I'd be sitting here in 2022 saying nice things about Senator Dick Durbin, they think I was drinking vodka, I guess. Uh, but he and I have been good friends, and he has been a tremendous friend to our airport, as has Senator Duckworth, as has Congresswoman Bustos, as has Governor Pritzker, uh, and our legislative folks. And the, the bottom line is why this is important is though you may politically disagree with somebody, it's their job. They're in the seat, and you need to talk to them. And they want to find ways to help. And these, the, our congressional folks and our legislative folks, our state senators, our state representatives, have been so good to this airport. Uh, and that's why, in many ways, we have been as successful as we have. So I applaud you for having this type of event. And I encourage all of you in the room, in one way or the other, to find ways to reach across the table and try to get uh, people who make the decisions to make them aware of what you got here in, in Northern Illinois, because I think it's very important. So thank you, I appreciate it.